So George, I guess if you would, let's talk a little bit then about, you know, how was your battery architected to, to take advantage of or to help solve the problems that were introduced by these new net metering, these new net metering tariffs? Um, what would you say to an installer who's new to storage? What are some things that they should be considering when choosing which battery to offer? Because mo most installers are not going to just offer every battery. So, so anyway, about California, though, I, I think many of us consider California to be the trendsetter in terms of solar policy. And so where now you have to have storage to get the full credit for your solar and to allow you to self-consume your solar, we expect in the near future, other states are going to, to apply uh, or adopt similar changes. We're already seeing uh, North Carolina, what North Carolina just did this month. Um, and then other states will, will more most most likely move to a similar, you know, time of use or a different import export rate type of scheme, just like California has, which means you need to be able to store your own energy if you want to get the max the max payback. So George, I guess if you would, let's talk a little bit then about, you know, how was your battery architected to, to take advantage of or to help solve the problems that were introduced by these new net metering? these new net metering tariffs where, you know, you're not getting a one for one buyback anymore. You may have to use the battery to shift your, to shift your consumption so you can avoid peak rates. So how does your battery help to solve some of these problems? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, and I also noticed on uh, one of your podcasts, you also kind of uh, look into the different operating mode uh, or our product EPQ. So you're probably familiar with this. So first of all, I, I do want to just uh, give a quick background of the product so everybody know what we're talking about. So EPQ for us includes a hybrid inverter, which means I can take the PV directly as a DC input, or I can connect to existing PV system as an AC coupled system. So we have a hybrid inverter, we have a stackable batteries, we have a uh, control center, we call it smart gateway, that manage and control all the different energy uh, energy source and where they're going to flow to, right, including to the grid. So some of the stuff uh, uh, California is doing, uh, in, in, a, in essence, is uh, they want to raise, is a, you got to pay as you use, depending on which part of the day you want to use. Uh, it could be very, very high rate at the peak hours or where I live, uh, that's part of the PG&E uh, territory. Uh, the evening rates between four to eight is like 53 cents. Um, and the other time of the day is 38 cents. So from a financial perspective, you obviously want to use what's cheaper uh, versus what's most expensive. So this is where the battery kind of come in. Uh, we have, uh, we build in a few different modes, depends on what homeowner's strategy is. The strategy depends on what motivates them to use a battery, right? It's, it could be the full backup mode in case of a power outage. This is where we keep the battery charged at a certain percent. It could be a self-consumption mode. That means I'm going to use off of my uh, energy off my PB and my battery before using to a grid, right? And the last part would be, okay, let's build some uh, smarts into this by indicating the rate of uh, uh, your utility company gift on different hour a day, and the system will figure out what's the most economical way to use your batteries and or use the grid. An example like that would be, let's use my battery during the peak time, uh, peak charge, and recharge the battery if I need to uh, at the uh, least expensive part, you know, at midnight or, or early morning. That's just one example, waste of it. This is cool. So you can actually program your utilities rate schedule. Like let's say PG&E, I see the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge behind you. Right? So let's say it's PG&E, they have their different different time of use schedule, right? So you can actually program that into the battery software and then the battery will use its intelligence to to optimize when when you when you charge, when you discharge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh make it simple for the homeowner, right? Let the uh, let the program take care of that for you. So the homeowner, all you need, need to do is to enter in your rate. And uh, that's cool. Go. 
That's really neat. That's really neat. So, okay. Now, now, George, one of the things you know, and, and and you know, you probably got a sense from it on the Solar Search channel too, is that there, there's a lot of batteries on the market now. And many of the solar installers who are going to be tasked with, with actually putting these systems together for homeowners, many of the solar installers now, um, maybe they haven't done batteries in the past, but now, they, now they're kind of forced to do batteries if they want to continue on the solar business in California. Um, what would you say to an installer who's new to storage? What are some things that they should be considering when choosing which battery to offer? Because mo most installers are not going to just offer every battery. They're going to have to be selective about maybe try one or two, learn it, get you know, build up some proficiency, and then see how that that's working out. So, what would you say to installers who are new to storage? Why should they consider your product compared to some of the others that are on the market? You know, I'm going to answer that by telling you a conversation I had recently. So part of my job, uh, well, part of the things I like to do is go around and visiting our potential customer, right? In this case, will be installers. Uh, I just made a trip through uh, Florida recently. Um, exactly. You know, some of those new installer or electricians, uh, they heard about storage. They say, wow, it's going to be, this is going to be complicated. How do I compete against a, a diesel generator? or propane generator, you know, that's the kind mm -hmm. of conversation I have, right? So it's not to the sophistication of uh, equipment they worry about is, well, how do I install this? What is, what is the basic benefit and so on and so forth. So the solution to that is make it simple, make it as simple as possible, right? And, and obviously it's a, a veteran like you, you have seen the, different type of competitor for them to ground out the system. They will have multiple components, third party components. Sometimes homeowner have to integrate all the different companies product together to make a system work. Um, we're trying to solve that problem. You know, for us, there's an EPQ with a hybrid and a battery. Here's a smart gateway, our panel, boom, you're, you're there. Uh, full home backup. You know, that's another buzzword, but essentially it's we making that work simple for electricians. Put us in between the service meter and your main panel, which drive the whole thing, right? Uh, components like uh, auto transfer switch, uh, CT, current transformer, all that is all integrated into our product. So the first questions that we talk, we show our case to those new installer is, look, it's not that hard to do. Right. Second part is how do we build all those intelligence features into the product without a big, huge user manual for installer to figure out how everything's going to work? You know, all the time of use features, uh, weather watch, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Right, everything is built in. Everything's uh, uh, controlled via the mobile app for the homeowner. It's very simple. So we show that to the installer. Say. For you to talk to your homeowner, it's not a fancy VCR. You have to learn how to program. <laughs> this thing <laughs> just do that. That makes sense. Uh, so, ease of installations, ease of use are big care about. And the third part they always want to figure out because installers actually are best salesperson, right? They're the one have to communicate and communicate and convince the homeowner. So, what are some of the value propositions? Generator, again, recent conversation we had, right? So their thing is, how do we tell homeowner you should use battery instead of generator? I said, well, the usage of generator, you know, I use a simple word is for people want to survive, right? Whether it's a power outage, you want to survive. You need electricity, so you have a generator. And so you put up with a little bit of noise, maintenance, and all that kind of stuff, but you have your uh, uh, insurance, if you will. Okay, great. Battery can do the same thing. Doesn't make that kind of noise and doesn't require you to do a yearly maintenance. And guess what? Besides the survival mode, you can actually save a little bit of money because during the day, you can run the battery you know, automatically, especially if you have a PV system on. You can't do that with a generator. You have to go out and start a generator and all your neighbor know when you start a generator. Right? So, uh, it's right. just an example of the composition which tried to uh, help educate our installer friends. 
Yeah, no, the, these are great points, George. And, and you're right, because the way your product is architected, I mean, it's really just two pieces. If you were to look at the finished install, it's basically two pieces. You have the, the transfer switch or the, the gateway, and then you have the hybrid inverter with the battery. It's all one stack. You know, you have your inverter on top and then you have, you know, however many battery storage, I think it's minimum three up to six battery storage cells underneath of it, but it's all basically one piece against the wall. Um, and of course the DC coupled wiring is, it does make for faster wiring, right? There's, there's not MLPE on every panel. You've got to, you know, there's just more connections, more potential points of failure with, with the DC coupled system. It definitely is a cleaner, faster install. Uh, and I know that having installed DC coupled systems, not this one in particular, but when I was installing, we were using, you know, Fronius inverters, SMA inverters that were, were DC coupled string inverters and they, they install fast. That's one of the advantages. They install very fast.